to the channel. Today, working on the Equinox, or as I call it, the Chevy two-stroke, because whenever I fill up the uh, gas tank, I also fill up the oil pan. So, today, let me show you what we're doing here. Yeah, there you go. We got the motor somewhat ripped apart here. I got the uh, camera flipped around for you there. You can see what's going on. Uh, this thing goes through more oil than McDonald's. Um, probably, I, I think it was like a quart of oil every 200 miles. So quite wretched. Um, okay, so here's the level after 232 miles. Ooh, that's bad. So my intention here, you can see I've got most of the, some of this stuff taken apart here. I want to take the head off and then pull the oil pan out and replace the rings. But I've got, I've got an issue. I didn't want to do this quite yet. I was going to wait until later, uh, a few more months before doing this. But I ran into a little problem where it started misfiring, or at least it appeared to be a misfire. Uh, but it actually is not a misfire. So I did a whole power balance test and all this stuff. Unfortunately, that wasn't the issue. So what it turns out after I did a leak down test and did a compression uh, test on it, cylinder one here only has 30 PSI. The, uh, the, these three here, cylinder two, three, and four, are at about 240 PSI. And part of that is, you know, we got slightly elevated PSI because there's probably a ton of oil in those cylinders. I don't think spec is really 240 PSI, but I don't have a shop manual. I'm just kind of winging it here. Um, but based on other motors I've worked on, that, that seems quite high. So it's probably just because there's so much oil in there, it's kind of sealing up um, and making a really good seal. But that just tells you how bad cylinder one is at 30 PSI. So um, I got to rip this all down. So if this is something, an issue you're having and you, you've been thinking about maybe trying to replace these rings, I'm going to kind of go through this. I'm not going to do a full step-by-step, -step, um, but I will kind of point out some of the major um, things and some of the tricky things you might need to know as I kind of figure it out. Because again, I don't know, I'm just winging this. And, um, you know, if, if there's any special tools or anything uh, that kind of come about that maybe the average person doesn't have, I'll kind of let you know. You know what I'm using. So at this point, I've got the air box out, and I took you know the shield off of here and and what have you. Um, you got to take this high pressure fuel pump out. That's quite simple to get to. There's nothing crazy about that. Um, I just put it up here. I you know I left the fuel line attached to it. Um, the intake manifold. You got to unbolt that and kind of pull it back a little bit. And then you got to take the four bolts out that hold the fuel rail in and you got to wiggle the fuel rail out and then the intake manifold will come right out. So that's the order in which you got to do that. So at this point, I'm going to try and get some of this, these doodads back here off so I can get down to the exhaust manifold, disconnect that. And then hopefully I can get this head uh, off of here. Now I don't know yet exactly um, what I need to do about the chain and everything over here. I might just try to disconnect those sprockets and just pop them off. I don't know what's going to happen yet, whether or not I might have to, you know, go down underneath and, you know, take that. There's a, there's a lower, um, cover down below for the, uh, for the chain and the other components of balance shafts and what have you. So I don't know. I might have to get down in there first, but I'll let you know what happens as I, as I get through this. Um, but I would like to at least just get the head off of this before I get down to the bottom and start working on the oil pan. And then hopefully in the end, uh, at least let you know whether or not this whole thing works. You know, can you just replace the rings and maybe hit the cylinders with a ball hone, you know, and stop this ungodly amount of oil burning that's, that's happening in these engines and uh, try and give you an idea of about how long it took to do this. So I'm going to jump into it now and we'll see a, Hopefully back once I get maybe that exhaust manifold off and, and a few of those fun things. Okay, I haven't gotten very far, but I did get the valve cover off here. And uh, yeah, just don't forget there's a bolt in the center here, not just the ones around the outside. 
Um, I almost didn't see that one. I did a last check before trying to pull it off and there was one there. So, but anyway, wow. That is the grimiest, nastiest engine I've, well, not that I've ever seen. I've seen some bad ones. Folks, this is what happens when you don't maintain your engine. And uh, that would be me. Yep. I don't maintain this thing, okay? I just dump oil on it because it burns it out. I change a filter, you know, once every 20,000 miles. Now, okay, maybe every five or 6,000 miles I change that filter. I just keep dumping oil in. And there's so much sludge and crap in this motor. You know, it's at 160 some thousand now. Um, I just didn't care, right? Because it just burned so much. I figured if it blew up, hell with it. I'll just buy another one. Um, now that I'm fixing it, maybe I should have taken better care of it. But uh, yeah, so we'll take this to the machine shop and we'll get it, we'll get it uh, jet washed and clean all that crap up. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna try and get this exhaust manifold off here and then we'll deal with this timing chain situation. Exhaust manifold, I got the shield off of there. But here's what we're looking at. Look at that crack. <laughs> you got a huge crack there and one right here. But anyway, looks like it'll be easier to remove the flange down here. There's a bolt there, there's three bolts, one over here and then one right there. So if I take those three, I should be able to just leave the manifold attached to the head and pull it all off as one unit instead of trying to get back here and get all these bolts out back here that hold the manifold to the head. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Man, no wonder this thing was kind of loud. Crazy. Anyway. Okay, I'll let you know how that goes. Alrighty. Um, got the bolts out for this manifold that going into the catalytic converter there. Uh, so the manifold just come out with the head now. Um, almost got the head ready to come out, ish, sort of. I uh, got everything mostly disconnected from it, I should say. So there's uh, a couple things that keep an eye out for. There's a ground wire that goes back here. You got to pull that out. And then underneath of that, we got the cam sensor down there. That's also a 10 millimeter bolt. Pull that out. There's another cam sensor under here you got to pull out. And then we've got that PCV hose that comes over with this one that connects into a little module that sits here. You got to pull that out. And then you got this little loop here. If you can see it, that loop right there. And this wiring harness goes inside of it. So you got to get that disconnected. Or you could just unbolt this bracket, but I'm leaving a bracket on. I just took the wiring harness out of the loop. And that takes care of everything that's attached to the head on this side. So the head should, you know, once the bolts are out, be free on this side. Now over here, uh, there's a, a chain uh, guide that sits here. I took that off and uh, yeah, we'll pull those off and hopefully, I mean, I'm not concerned about timing situation because it's all gonna I'm gonna put a whole new kit on it and have to reset everything. So I'm probably just gonna pop those off and yank the head off of there. Update, we've got cam sprockets off. I took this little hose off that was on here, a little coolant hose. Um, I do have the radiator drained. I did that way earlier, forgot to mention that. And the battery's disconnected for all you real mechanics who were like, oh, I bet he didn't disconnect the battery. Yes, I did. Okay, so um, cam sprockets are off. So I think we might be able to uh, pull these head bolts out. Okay, more updates. So I've got head bolts are all loose now. A few things you might need to know about if you're going to do this. There are four smaller little screws like this. So there's two here that I noticed uh, before. 
but there's also one over here in this corner and then one back here in this corner and it uses kind of a star pattern bolt kind of like a reverse torx bit i can't remember what those are called uh, but it uses a socket like that so you got to have that to get those out of there and what you also have to do is let's see where is it at so you have a guide over here for your timing chain that covers this hole and so there's a 10 millimeter bolt that you have to take out that holds this in place but to do that there's a big pipe plug sitting there and that is this guy here as you can see it is a big allen key to get that thing out of there so you gotta pull that plug out then you can get to this 10 millimeter bolt that holds that guide in place and once you get that guide loosened up, you can move it over and you can get that bolt out of there. And as far as I can see, there's no other bolts except for these, um, what is that, 10, uh, 10 head bolts here. So I think it's ready to come off, but I don't know. I'm gonna wiggle on the head a little bit and see if, it, see if it's loose. Um, if not, well, let's just wiggle on it. Oh yeah, it's loose. You probably can't see that because the whole car is moving, but you can see we got fluid running down here now. So I should probably get something under there to catch some of it. Okay, so pull that off and hopefully there's nothing that I forgot that's hanging it up. So I'll get back to you in a minute here. Ta-da! So that was really it. It was the four bolts up here in the front. And then the 10 bolts for the head, and it just kind of wiggled and came right off. Uh, I'll be honest, this really wasn't that difficult. Um, this is kind of something that most DIY kind of people, I think, could do without too much trouble. Especially if this is all the further you had to go. If you were changing a head gasket, you know, or uh, valves or seals or something like that. Um, this really wasn't all that difficult. The other thing I should mention... Um, if you notice all the pistons are at the, about the halfway point, I did that on purpose so that whenever I took the, um, when I took the cam sprockets off, when you take those off, the cams are going to flip, you know, because they're, they're not being held in place by the chain. And so some of those valves might be open, you know, some are closed, but depending on where it's at, when you take the tension off of the chain, the cam's going to spin around. And so... I wanted to make sure that that wasn't gonna wasn't gonna interfere with the pistons in any way. Not that it really would do a whole lot. There's there's no, you know it's not really that much pressure. You know it's just not like the engine's running and it's gonna crush the valves. But anyway, just to be on the safe side, I made sure they were all halfway. And I do that just by looking at the cam. But you can also do it um, by just dropping like a wooden dowel rod or something down in and kind of measuring on each one until you figure out where they're all the halfway point. Anyway, I now know why this thing had um, no compression. So that, my friends, that blown out chunk right there of that valve is why there was no compression on cylinder one. You can see these other cylinders are a whole lot better looking. A lot of, a lot of buildup on them, but of course, you know, this thing's been burning oil for 100,000 miles. So... So here's where we're at now. I got the motor mount taken off, but I put a jack here underneath the engine and I put a block of wood on it and it's just sitting on the oil pan right now just to keep the engine up so we don't want it to drop down and break anything. So I took, uh, there's two mounts. So you got one mount here that mounts the frame, then it attaches to a block that bolts to the engine here. So it's two separate mounts that I took off. The one that goes to the engine, there's three bolts on it. There's two bolts back here. They're easier to get to with an open-ended wrench. And then once you get those out of the way, um, yeah, and you can get the tensioner and serpentine belt and all that. And then I took the alternator off. But that's where I'm at now. The other thing I'm going to do, um, I've got this old pipe bender. You can see it's kind of sitting up across the, the car here. 
I want to be able to take the jack out from underneath the engine. So what I'll do is I'll use the, the motor mount bolt, or not the motor mount, um, the head bolts, and I'll attach a chain uh, up to this bar. So it'll keep the engine up in the air. Actually, I'll probably do it on this side. This is the side that'll want to drop down. So I'll run a chain up to here. That way I can take the, the jack out of the back or the bottom. Also, that'll allow me, because this car, by the time I get the cylinder head all done and I get all the parts, it'll probably be a couple of weeks. I really don't want this car clogging up my garage space and I don't want my Corvette to just sit outside. So I want to be able to bring the Corvette in every day. So I, I want this thing to be able to roll <laughs> in and out of the garage during this, uh, during this process. Another thing that I got to do is I got this block here. So we need to get that bolt loose down there for the um, uh, our crank pulley. That bolt's going to be really tight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this block. This is just a steel block. You could probably use a steel plate or whatever. What I'll do is I'll put a bolt in that so the head bolt here and a head bolt here and then i'll just drop a socket down here between the piston and this block and then I'll, that'll prevent the motor from being able to turn over when i break that nut loose so this one is drilled for a chevy engine already so what i'll do is i'll probably go from that hole over to this hole and i'll drill one here so i'll put a, a bolt here a bolt here and then a socket in there i'll be able to break that loose so I'm gonna do that now and then I'll get the chain hooked up here and then I'll go underneath and start working down there probably or maybe start taking these bolts out of this uh, timing cover over here. <laughs> 